7.30 a.m. The next morning, Sid woke up and walked downstairs to eat breakfast. Hey, Sid, did you sleep well? Mrs. Phillips asked, coming downstairs. Yeah, I guess, Sid answered, half-tired, eating his multigrain fruit rings from his cereal. Mrs. Phillips then walked into the living room to watch the news. Sid felt stressed about what happened last night. He shivered thinking about that horrible encounter with Buzz. He wished this was a dream, but it wasn't. It was a real horrible nightmare. As Sid was about to dunk his face into his bowl of cereal, he heard a somewhat peculiar hint on television. Truth or Hoet? A strange doll has been spotted walking at 3 a.m. We can neither confirm nor deny the secret until further notice. Sid then entered the living room to see his mother watching the news. Oh my goodness, she gasped. A living doll? Sid put on a face full of shock hearing this before his mother noticed. Um, Sid? Is something wrong? Mrs. Phillips asked in concern. Sid didn't bother to spit out the word, so he went back upstairs to his room and closed his door. He sat down in the corner of his room, curled into fetal position, hyperventilating and rocking in fear. What is happening to this world? He asked incredulously. All of those toys are coming to life! Sid got out of fetal position to calm himself down and be brave. Okay, I must do it again tonight. I must, he declared, putting on a brave face. Sid got to work, packing his things in his backpack and waited for tonight to solve another mystery. 7.30 p.m. Sid had skated to Pizza Planet, guessing this was where the doll had gone to. He noticed the entrance doors had been shattered and the animatronic robots guards had broken down. He approached the automatic doors to see if they could still work, but they were broken too. So he had to carefully step through the broken doors to not accidentally touch the broken glass and cut himself. Sid made it in carefully. Not even a scratch, he whispered. Sid started to walk around and find some clues and solve some mysteries, but little did he know, something was watching him from inside the rubbish bin. As he was looking around, Sid noticed all the arcade games were shut down, most likely due to the disasters that happened. He felt his heart about to pump fast due to being in a quiet, abandoned restaurant. The first thing Sid saw in Pizza Planet was a crane game that he used to play, and he found Woody and Buzz in. Only that- only difference was that half the glass was broken and the claw was missing. He approached the crane game quietly and noticed all of the squeaky toy aliens were gone. However, he found another green soldier at the very bottom. Another soldier? Sweet! He whispered as he put the green army men into his backpack. He then noticed the alien slime drink dispensers, thinking of grabbing a drink while looking. As Sid grabbed a nearby cup, he put it under one of the automatic alien dispensers, but the alien didn't dispend any flavors. Sid waited until green juice got poured into his cup, so did another green soldier. Sid noticed the green soldier fall into his cup, so he put his fingers in his drink and grabbed it out. Covered in slime, but I'll definitely keep it, Sid spoke, inspecting the soldier covered in thick slime. He blew onto the soldier to dry him up and put it in his backpack to look around for soldiers and to find some more clues. Sid saw a door that was left wide open. He hesitated to go inside because he thought something might be waiting for him, but went inside anyway. He looked inside and there wasn't anyone inside. It was just an empty kitchen meant to make food for the restaurant, like pizzas, hamburgers, drinks, etc. Sid felt freaked out as his nervous nerve system was getting higher. However, he managed to put on a brave face and continue solving the mystery. He looked through the kitchen to find another green soldier. Through the pans, utensils, amongst other things, 
Sid couldn't find one anywhere. However, he found one in a red substance in a metal bowl with pepperonis. Sid whimpered as his hand holding the soldier trembled. Is th that b b Sid stammered, asking himself. However, he sniffed the air and realized that the soldier was covered in tomato paste. Sid sighed in relief, relieved that it wasn't blood, just tomato paste. He put the army soldier into his backpack with the other army men that he put in. Sid exited the kitchen to, yet again, find more soldiers and find clues. Sid looked around, shining his flashlight all over the place, until... That there's a, a snake in, in my, my a boot, boot, boots. An unnerving voice box played in the dark, echoing. Sid held his flashlight close to his chest, shivering in fear. What the hell was that? Sid mumbled in fear. He tiptoed quietly, looking for another soldier. After a few seconds of searching, he found a broken rocket ride. Sid walked over to inspect it before he found a fourth soldier in the seat. Re reach for, for the, the sc sky archive, that same voice box said, echoing through the darkness. Sid's adrenaline began to kick in. He had fear on his face, looking around. Sid then walked over to the now damaged Wacken Alien game to find suspicions. As he inspected it, he saw a bit of blood on the edge, he began to breathe heavily, getting more adrenaline, pumping, rushing through his body. Sid didn't bother aborting his mission, and just went to look inside one of the holes of the broken arcade game. He reached his hand in to find a so another soldier and felt something. Once he pulled his hand out, he found a fifth soldier, but he was slightly stained in blood. Okay, don't freak out, Sid. You can't be scared of toys anymore. You've got a man up, Sid whispered, trying to reassure himself. Suddenly, there was a there was clanging from the, inside the Wacker Alien arcade gang. This startled Sid to the point he was about to lose his sanity. And out popped a familiar doll. That doll was Woody. His eyes were scratched out as if he was possessed. I said, remember me? Would he spark in a venomous and threatening turn? Sid screams really loud, echoing through the entire night, loud enough to alert people walking in the night or police. Woody jumped on top of Sid and pinned him down to supposedly kill him by strangling him to death. Woody laughed wickedly as he attempted to wrap his plastic hands around the 13-year-old punk's neck. I've learned my lesson, you wimpy ragdoll! What the hell do you want from me this time? Sid cried in fear. Have you been playing nice, little boy? Woody asked with a menacing grin, staring at Sid with his white blank eyes. Do you remember what you did to your poor toys? Especially your little sisters? Well, I'm going to do the reversal to you. Woody then pulled something out from his holster which turned out to be a rusty nail. A rusty sharp nail. I'm gonna start by giving you a makeover. Starting with your forehead. Woody snickered with a demented smile on his face. As Woody was about to stab Sid in the forehead, the latter suddenly snatched his hand and swung him towards the broken crane game, breaking a bit of the remaining glass. No way, Jose! Sid yelled with a scowl. Woody got back up on his floppy legs and approached Sid. Sid felt threatened. His heart beated really rapidly seeing the once loyal and protective cowboy doll getting the urge to kill him as revenge. You may run, Sid, but we will always find you, Woody stated, walking towards the boy. Sid had to make a run for his life as if he didn't want the doll to murder him. So he quickly scurried out. He carefully stepped out of the automated doors to not cut himself with glass shards accidentally as Woody followed behind. Sid then noticed the dustbin and found some garbage sticking out and decided to drop it on Woody. Woody ran towards Sid to attack him again, 
but Sid dropped all the litter on him at the right moment he got close enough. Stay down, creep! yelled Sid as he ran to his skateboard to evacuate from Pizza Planet. Woody grabbed all of the garbage off of him and watched the boy skate off. He glared angrily at first, but his frown then grew into a devilish grin. We've got more toys who can get rid of that boy. Just he waits. <laughs> Declared Woody before he chuckled evilly. 9 or 4 p.m. Sid had arrived back home, safe and sound. He locked everything in the house for, sa for the safety of himself and his family. The doors and windows. He trudged upstairs to his room and slumped down onto his bed curled into fetal position and fell fast asleep. As he slept, Sid thought of that horrible encounter with Woody and felt bad that he failed to overcome his fear of him, like what happened two years ago. But if he heard the news next morning, he would definitely go on another mystery.